interested in the hazards of organophosphorus pesticides? Um, as a medical student, I always wanted to go and work in the tropics, and I found myself a mentor in Oxford called David Worrell, who was a world expert in snake bite. So I went on a summer, ho summer holiday, effectively for two months, to do clinical trials of snake bite. It was the wrong time of year. There was no rain, no one cutting rice, and no snake bites. So, all I, so I ended up standing in the hospital looking, and all I could see was poison patients after poison patient after poison patient coming in. And they were either organophosphorus pesticide poisons, uh, a seed of a tree called the oleander tree giving you heart problems, or people have seizures from organochlorine pesticides. But standing back, I was able to see that organophosphates was the major worldwide problem with probably 200,000 deaths every year. And that was, where, that was the beginning of my interest. And you mentioned some <coughs> of the risks, but what are the main hazards, the main adverse effects of exposure to these pesticides? We need to remember the, pest, the exposure is generally through drinking. It's people who are stressed, who are harming themselves. As we would take paracetamol in the UK, people in these villages take pesticides. So a very fast absorbed pesticide will cause you to have seizures, the, your limbs to stop working, to stop breathing, covered in sweat, covered in fluid, peeing uncontrollably, lots of multiple diverse effects on the body, which are really very damaging. And what's known about the, the causes of these adverse effects? We know fundamentally this, this pesticide works in insects by inhibiting a certain enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. And what this enzyme does is shut down neurotransmission. If the nerve tells the muscle to work, the, this enzyme stops the message going through. If you inhibit the enzyme, the message keeps going through and the nerves keep telling the muscles to work. And so the patients have these reverberating muscle movements and their muscle movement of respiration and breathing stops working. What's been done in terms of trying to get safer agents, or is it possible to get safer agents developed? This is one of my um, big problems of the field, is that it's driven by occupational exposure. Cla the WHO classifies pesticides into class 1, which are highly toxic, class 2, which are moderately toxic, but still pretty damn toxic to, to humans, and class 3 and below, which are pretty safe. Class 1s have been used for years. We know parathion is kind of the classic one we've used in the West for many years until it was banned. Um, there's a movement because of the dangers of occupational poisoning to move to class 2 pesticides like dimethoate, which are quite s much more safe in occupational use, farmers using them. If you drink them, they're still extremely dangerous. So we're left with a situation that's slightly more safe, but not fundamentally safe for the problem which exists. And st staying with that, has there been any attempt to add an anemetic to the agents to try and get people to vomit before they become affected by the um, drugs? No, because the, the emetics tend to have to be absorbed before they work. And we know that in paracord poisoning, where this attempt was, was done 20 years ago, that everybody who vomits dies. So effectively, it's the people who have absorbed enough to have the emetic effect who then die. So it seems unlikely to be a very effective method. And I would just like to make pesticides so safe you can drink it happily. I mean, there's one beautiful patient who was um, 65 years old, a drunk, his wife hated him, his children hated him, his crops have failed. He went to the pesticide shop to commit suicide and said, give me your best pesticide. Gave her four, paid a lot of money, four dollars, a lot of money for pesticide. Went home, stood in front of his whole family, drank the bottle, said, now I'm going to die. I hate you. And he didn't die. So three days ago, when am I going to die? And we said, well, actually, the pesticide you chose is extremely safe. So there are some pesticides out there which are so safe that even in self-harm, they will allow people to express the anger, the, the emotional feelings, and yet live. Currently, the problem we have is so many of the pesticides being used, especially in the developing world, are in everybody's house because we all use it in the Green Revolution, and um, they're very, very dangerous. What are the options for general supportive treatment or specific antidotes for people who've had an overdose? And the important thing with these patients is, is to keep them breathing. The major problem, as I said, was that you stop breathing, you become paralyzed. So patients are ventilated and can be ventilated for two to three weeks. They also produce lots of fluids as a result of the cholinergic system being activated. So we use the drug atropine, which is an antagonist at the receptor to try and control the effects. There's also a drug called praladoxine, which has been recommended for many years since it was first used in the 50s. And that seemed to work very well for these very toxic OPs in occupational, so low dose exposures. But when you're taking large doses of parathion, or even large doses of the class two ones, it really doesn't seem to work very well. So we're needing really much better antidotes, which may be more specific to the problems we see rather than the kind of general antidotes. So for example, Many patients aspirate, breathe in the pesticide into their lungs, and as a result, they die from pneumonia. If we can find treatments for that injury, we may be able to keep people alive, but we're not really fundamentally addressing the problem itself. We're trying to supportively care, them, supportively care for people through the crisis. And would you comment on your own research and other experimental approaches, <coughs> trying to understand more about 
the causes of harm and possible new insights into treatments? Um, what I've done over the last six or seven years is predominantly worked as a clinician in Sri Lanka in these district general hospitals, seeing patients, trying to understand why they're becoming ill and how their illness correlates with the textbooks and find the textbooks are really not quite right. And then moving on from that to working with mini pigs in a model system where we anesthetize mini pigs, we give them organophosphorus pesticides and try to find antidotes that way. And we found really quite major effects of the solvent in the mixture. It's not just the OP as we've always thought for years, it's the OP plus the solvent. And if we can find, if we can change the formulation, make the solvent safer, we can potentially save many tens or hundreds of thousands of lives by simple formulation changes, which may make it unnecessary to find new treatments. Where do you think future research focus should be directed and, and how, how is that being funded now and where, where should, should the money be coming from, do you think, in terms of, of stakeholder organisations? Um, I think there's a quite a lot of research that's been done. What we need to do is get those into public health systems, into government policy. So while we can continue to do research to find better treatments and to do public health trials like I'm doing in Sri Lanka where we try to find better ways of storing the pesticides to make them useful in the house, it's going to be fundamentally about governments realising that self-harm and suicide is a major problem worldwide. And indeed there's been some advance recently because the WHO said only two or three years ago they now understand that pesticide poisoning is the single most important means of suicide worldwide, which has actually made, you know, that's kind of a footprint in the snow in a way. You can now start moving on from that very major important statement to going to the governments and saying you've got to start changing what pesticides you're using. You can't think only of agricultural yield. You've got to compare agricultural yield with the public health effects, which is both occupational and intentional. And allowing, encouraging people to use pesticides in their house, in their garden, effectively is what happened in Asia. 80% of people are farmers. You're going to encourage self-harm and encourage fatal self-harm. Thank you very much.